All right, hi, um, hey, hello. Um, my name is Daniel Guys. I'm the creative and technical director at ED Film, at ED Films. Um, we're going to continue this this live stream approach here uh, to try and get this painting looking a little better. Um, I, I'm picking right up where I left off. I had a bunch of meetings and stuff today, so um, now we're back at it. So. We were just verifying to make sure that we could use these assets in the game engine and they did work. So I'm going to continue. And I think what I'm going to do is I want to make these trees better because they look terrible at the moment. So let's, um, let's have a look to at one of the references I'm using for color and light. It's this one here. And if you look at the actual trees, they, they have quite a, I mean, these are way too uniform, but, and not, it's not that interesting because it's a real photograph but you can see they kind of have this like sawtooth feeling to them. Now I'm not using my like photographs. I, I like to use sparingly as far as actual reference and would like to be careful with them so they don't over influence what I'm doing. Um, but that being said, we can see that there's some distinct, even far in the distance when these trees get very far away, there is some st distinct forms and shapes that are suggested. So I think we can follow that and take that to the bank as far as how do we need to treat our far background objects and we can't just be blobby and we can be uh, obviously but i wanted things to have a sharpness to it so um we're gonna we're going to re-explore the next level of trees back here in rebel so let's uh we'll go back in there and what i've done too is i've made the comp instead of it being a 4k square hey uh, hey mobin mobin uh welcome to the stream uh why are you using game engine if you're making a film um Shivam, I'm, I'm, we're actually using a game engine because we're experimenting. Hey, Pramod, welcome back. Um, we're experimenting with uh, more and more game engines are being used for making film. And we're looking at making a series, um, an animated series called Elemented. And Elemented will be made largely using game engines. So this is part of our exploration of figuring out if game engines are a viable um, tool for creating animation, because yes, the other thing is Elemented, or sorry, even Harry Hill, we're going to be using the game engine to help animate the characters. So part of this is all, it's all kind of tied together. Um, so, and, and using the game engine too is, you know, when I'm using After Effects, um, it can be very, very slow to render, even when you're compositing. Um, oh, thanks for the nice comp uh, compliment, Abdullah. I appreciate that. Um, Anyways, even when you're compositing in After Effects, it's super, super, super slow. And uh, as if any of you guys have done it, you'll find that that you're just moving your camera can take forever. So that so we're trying game engines. I'm trying. I'm trying to see. I, I wanna. I I tend to like to keep trying different te techniques and, and ways of doing things, and that's one of the methods I'm looking at right now. Okay, so let's try to. We're gonna get some new trees, new tree branches. Ugh, that tree's awful right there. How can I hide that? It's a horrible tree. I don't think I can just erase it. I like what was happening here for a second, but then I ruined it. It's ruined. So, so long. I'm liking this brush, though, this pine brush. So this is, I believe this is actually, yeah, this is a photograph I grabbed online of of just, like, of neat pine needles. And I stuck it together like this, and I just saved a PNG file and combined it with a grain texture inside of this program here, inside of Rebel. So now... I can do this even, and again, I, I said this earlier on the earlier stream, even though my trees look horrible while I'm drawing them, um, because of the, the way the water sim happens. And once you get the right water, water to ink aspect, uh, ratio, the, um, the effect can be quite nice. So I'm pressing nice and light I'll do a couple of little big ones. I want to be careful though, cause these are supposed to be far away trees. Um, what am I doing? Um, I am making a, uh, we're doing some paintings. Sorry, I guess I should have said that. I'm being a little overly informal here. Um, what we're doing is, let's, we'll hop over here, sorry. We are taking this painting that was a really fast uh, sketch in Photoshop that mixes 3D elements from Harry Hill, which is a short film that we're working on right now with that mixes these paper dolls with hand-painted environments. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to come up with the visual treatment for the film so that we have essentially a target that we can push towards for the project. So instead of trying to use work fully in 3D or something like that, this will be this is helping me map out a target that we can then strive for 
inside of the engine, whether whether we went full 3D or just Maya, whatever, or After Effects, because the we need to figure out what is it going to look like. And this is really normal. I usually work this way for every project. Okay, I'm also going to double this up so that I have two sides here. So let's just go like this. It's going to look really terrible for a bit. I suppose I should be looking at some reference. I keep saying that, and then I keep forgetting about it. Okay. Let's just hide that away. That looked terrible. All right. So I'm going to make this pine clump. So I'm going to make these clumps that I can then reuse in several different ways and start stacking together, very much like we do in After Effects. Um, let's just put this like this. I want to. I might actually flip my canvas. So if I go here, I can uh, flip the canvas do, 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 over like that. And then this way, I can just do these. Make them look a little better. Oh no! Oh, that's terrible. I wonder if that's salvageable. I totally butchered that one. Well, maybe it'll look cool. Who knows? Okay. So if I turn it sideways, I get kind of upward, st downward strokes. And if I turn it like this, if the line is going up and down, those are sideways. If I have it like this, it's more the actual length of the tree. So I'll probably try to bring this painting into After Effects or for sure into Maya or something to like make sure that it's going to work. Okay, it's not horrible. Probably use a little, uh oh, saving. Got a little more stuff going on here. I'm gonna get some really thin tree lines here. This brush is actually working pretty well. They may be a bit too busy. We'll see. But it doesn't, again, it's super cool because it bleeds out and it's really good because it hides the repetitive hideousness of that brush. What's the reference window? I've never I've never used it. How do I get to it, Pajelvic? Do you know? It's funny, I use this program all the time and I barely know anything about it. Okay, let's get this here. Pajelovic always knows tons of things that I don't know anything about. Hey Spunrita, welcome to the stream. It's been a while. How are things? unofficial stream here today as usual I guess okay so I'm just terminating that kind of looks like a w an ugly waveform okay so I guess what I would do is probably do a few of those um, window and reference image okay window reference image oh control R cool we can just drag and drop it in there. Amazing. I didn't even know that thing existed. Cool. Let's go. We'll go grab some of our reference images. Oh, I guess on a side note, we finished the main audio. We finished the main audio mix for Giant Bear, which is really cool. We're taking it into the studio, I think a week or two from now for our, our um, 7.1 surround mix, which will be super fun. Mm, references land there we go uh which one do we want to use these are pictures that i took they're not great but they at least give you kind of a rough idea let's use one of these ones because it's got uh, lots of pine trees in it we'll take this one what was that the right one no, that wasn't the right one what am i doing it was what one that one with the barn let's drop it in Cool. Amazing. I didn't even know that existed. Spun reader, are you working on any films or mostly is this work work stuff? Is it can you zoom in on this? Oh yeah, cool. Can I zoom in on it? No. Is there a way to zoom it? Grayscale. Cool. It's got a grayscale mode too. That's wicked. I just don't know how to zoom in on it. 
Who cares? It's still cool. It's good. We don't want to zoom in anyway because zooming in makes you over, makes me overly detailed. Uh, let's make sure we have black. Cool. You can pull color from it too. That's dope. Uh, yes, Bunrita. I made it for Rebel. It's just like a photograph of I, I brought this into Photoshop and kind of photo took took some uh, some things probably offline. I'm assuming of pine bows boughs, and it actually works surprisingly well for pine trees. I'm just trying to create some distant pine trees here. I think what I'm going to do, um, I'm just doing the tops and the bottoms, but probably should have made this thicker, honestly, but we'll, we'll be fine for now. Okay, I'll do another one. Oh, you know what? I don't have a mouse wheel on this mouse, but I do on this one. There we go. I have like this old fashioned mouse, not old fashioned, but it's like a, it's a ball mouse. It doesn't have, doesn't have a mouse wheel on it. So I end up having two mice here. I have like a regular Microsoft mouse with a wheel, and then my normal ball mouse one. Anyways, it's ridiculous. Okay, let's do let's do a couple more trees, passes of pine trees. Now that we have some to look at for reference, um, maybe we can get just a bit of a better look here. Reference usually helps. Um, we'll go there. Okay. Um, how do you bring it into Rebel? Does Rebel read ABR files? No, 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 I haven't been over this. And no, it doesn't. I have to bring in PNG files. So you go up here to the 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 brush thing and you can go like, that's for duplicating a brush. But usually what I do is I'll duplicate a brush like that and then I'm gonna, then I'll change it. So I'll bring in an, imi an image. So I'll go here and I think you can just import, I'm trying to remember how I do this. Um, yeah, you go in and you import an image. So if I made an image, for instance, those are for some reason mud box. We're looking at mud box. But if I go to, uh, I think I had a folder for this. Um, projects. Uh, I don't know. It's probably in creative. Sorry, guys. I'm, I know I'm kind of being annoying. I'm an annoying person sometimes. Uh, Rebel presets, brush tips, raw. So I had these and I can bring in one of these. So this is like just I was experimenting with trying something different here. And there they are. It's like a pine tree brush sort of. So you can change your settings and stuff. The thing is you can only get so big with them. So they can be a little hard to use. Um, and I want to make sure this one's at kind of a weird angle. But then you can change your stuff here. It probably would increase the spacing on this. Um, angle. We don't want a jitter angle, really. But we want it to flip, though. We could do a little bit of jittering. Follow trajectory or pen tilt. But we want it. I'm not sure if it has the ability to do a random flip. Follow shape size, follow shape rotation. I don't think it has random flip, which is unfortunate because that really does help with things. Size jitter is fine. Opacity jitter, I suppose. Scatter might be a good one for this one. If we decrease the spacing. Let's try to get the right. No, scatter is abhorrible. Abhorrible. Why is this angle so awful? I know why, because I did it at an angle. I wish I could rotate that. But I can't. And then you can add a green image if you want, but I'm not going to do that. Let me just fix the rotation of this brush. So we go here to angle and we change it until it's more what we were expecting. That's the wrong one. Almost. Nope. That's better. Okay, so this might make for some cool trees. Um, this is my new brush. I'm not going to call it Twiggy. I want to rename this to something else. No. How do I rename it? Rename. Oh, change your name, brush. How do I rename you? Oh, there we go. Pine Distant. Oh, no problem. No problem, Pramod. Okay. Okay, cool. Now we have our distant pine trees. So let's just throw some in. See what happens. This could this could look good. Could look horrible. I'm expecting it to look kind of horrible, honestly. But let's see. It's a little tiled, but it's not the worst thing ever. Those might make for some really good far distant ones. Maybe I'll kill the loading down a little bit of the ink on the brush. 
just drop our loading down. Go something like this. Oops, we don't want them tipping all over the place. That's a we don't want to do tipping trees everywhere. They don't pine trees don't tip that much. I could get it to flip other than to rotate tip my it's not horrible maybe if we mix these together there's a couple of, there's another way we could do this which i just haven't gotten into yet is like creating a stencil um that's another option well those don't look terrible they are definitely a bit rep repetitious though so Probably the best bet for these ones, if we were going to do the, those ones, would be to paint some water down, use one of these, and like splatter a bunch of water. And then paint with these. Maybe we'll just do like a few little patches here and there. How can I like... Not always. I wish I could easily flip it. What do we say? Let's just go, instead of pen tilt, let's do tra trajectory. Maybe that will help. Does it do the opposite side? Not sure. Okay. So I'm going to fill this up with a bunch of stuff. Okay, it's kind of cool. Maybe it's good. Okay, mm. not it's not the worst thing I've ever made. I, I mean, I don't know. Oh no, Spun Reader, are you okay? Um, and you finished your short film at screen in October. Oh, nice! Congratulations. Oh no, your son had a, t a seizure. What kind of seizures does he have? Um. I had a friend who had really, well, they had, they were like small seizures. Eventually they grew out of them, but. Oh man, I'm so sorry to hear that, Spinrina. That's awful. That's really stressful. find this like angle thing is really doing anything okay anyways they do look like trees it's not the worst thing i've ever done here uh spinner i'm really sorry to hear about that stuff i i hope i hope you guys are doing okay it's really not fun put some water around here main thing here is to well let's also we'll just rotate this brush again so we have some of the tall trees down here We'll have a look and see how that one looks. We'll let it bleed out for a bit. And then we'll see how it, how it works. Um, then let's just try our pine brush for a bit. See, that's really big. But we could probably break up some of the monotony or some of the repetitive nature of things just by doing a couple little things here and there. I'm not sure about all this like busy shapes and stuff in there. It might not work, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so we'll keep that one. It's like another, another, I'd say that's a pretty good test. It looks pretty, uh, pretty decent for like far back trees. So we're going to do one more. I'm sorry, this is so boring. We'll do one more with like closer up trees. Something a little more along the lines of those. Um, 
and we'll do we'll just do that for a bit here. So let's put the loading back. I'm gonna put the water up quite a bit. So I'm gonna create so with this brush, if I'm like flat like this, it's like I do my straight lines first, which are kind of like the core of the tree, and then I like turn it sideways and get some of those like bigger parts sticking out like that. Okay, so let's try to get a rhythm here. And just put the, the core parts first. Kind of looking at the reference, not too specifically. Okay. Let's do a little, we'll do this little patch like this. Okay, couple like that, cool. Well, I'm glad I'm glad your son's okay for now. Um, did they did they tell you if it's something like? Do you have to worry? Is this something like? Um, I mean, obviously, like epilepsy is is typically pretty manageable nowadays. But I guess I is there any like uh, news about whether? I'm really sorry to hear that. That's so awful. It's so stressful things with your kids. It's the worst. Um, but is there any news about like? Uh, I guess if they're just doing inf research now and trying to figure it out. But can they give you any insight into other cases that might give you a sense of like what you're looking at for long-term care and, and management? Sleep-deprived EEG. Ugh. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, the poor little guy. <laughs> How old is your son? Okay, so here I'm just going to do the opposite side of the tree, the opposite trees on the on the other side. So we're going to do the, the stems first. Not stems, the trunks, I suppose, would be more accurate. Okay, and then I'll come in and do some, like, little bigger parts. I'm going to size the brush down a bit. Oops. Mm. But I think this isn't looking too bad. I mean, they're not like glorious, but they're not the ugliest things ever made. So let's just fill that in a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I might want to <laughs> fill this. This tree looks stupid. Uh, let's just rotate this to zero. Don't. Okay, and I think these ones look dumb, probably because they weren't they weren't upright, so I wasn't really seeing them properly. They looked really horrible. Let's just fatten that all up in there, make it like a big tree. Okay. All right, and then what we could do is we'll do a couple like, I suppose individual trees, just to be safe. Not safe, but sure. We'll let that water sim run for a minute. And then let's just push this one out a little bit. The nice thing about working this way is I definitely, you never know, I don't really ever know what I'm going to get. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, I broke it, but it's fine. We'll just deal with it. So there is something kind of nice about that workflow. Um, hey, hero, welcome to the stream. Yeah, great idea. If you're open to sharing it, it'd be nice to see. Give it some support, guys. It's amazing. Good point. Okay, let me just fix this. Ah. That's an, a weird tree right there. Not sure about that tree.
Okay, so let's do a couple little independent floating around trees. So we'll just do like, um, I'll do a core on it, which is important. And then we can rotate this like this and kind of do do the little bit of the, the bow structures or bow, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. Okay, and then we'll kind of move up the tree. And then once we get closer to the top, we'll just go like stuff like that. Now it turns. Okay, and then let's go here and we'll just really flesh it out. I just want to see how these trees will feel. Just a couple of medium distant trees, I suppose. Just a couple. Don't worry, we won't spend too much time on this. Okay, so let's go bust this out nice and big. that like that this way that way this way that way that way that way okay there's another tree and maybe we'll do one where we get a little bit of water involved so let's take um where is it where's the water brush right there let's just do a little spattery bit on here we'll see how this works some medication which now seems to be working well. They're doing an MRI tomorrow to see if the cause they may be a long term damage from the prolonged seizure, but oh no. Well, how how old is your son again? Did you tell me how old your son is? Um I have a friend, she she's uh she doesn't she works in um well essentially she works with neuroplasticity, but she's created this technology that helps um recover loss of neur neural um, of the nerves and helps remap it using the brain. And a lot of her research is, is around the, like the incredible power of the brain's neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to adapt and relearn how to, how to do things when it's lost portions of functionality. Oh, so he's still young. Um, That's good. I, I'm anyways, that it is promising to, with the research around neuroplasticity and the potential for the brain to recover from even really quite significant damage or losses. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, Spoon Rita. I, I hope, I hope things are okay. I'm glad you're taking such a, a positive, um, constructive view of it. Okay. So those trees are, that, that's okay. I, I don't hate those. Those are all right. No, it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's like, no, it's, it's, my gosh, we're just hearing news. We're not living it. So, um, you have like, if you need anything, let me know. Like that's, that's a huge thing to have to deal with. And I'm sorry. I can't imagine that, but oops. Okay. So, um, let's do, so we have a couple of pine trees there that are good. These are kind of distant pine trees. Let's do just a couple, one last thing. Cause I just want to have everything jammed in there so that like those look pretty dope um let's just i want to have one last thing where we kind of jammed everything in so that we have a lot to work with um so we have a couple trees solo trees we have a couple patches of trees i think what i want to do really quickly is let's take some we'll take some water and we'll um we'll kind of spatter it all over the place um Um, yeah, but the neuroplasticity stuff she's doing, which is so cool, is like she's able to take someone who's lost all feeling in their feet. And what they do is they they create this um, electro stimulation pad on your back that lines up with sensors in your feet. And then you actually learn to feel the pressure of your feet on your back. And it's for people that um, suffer from diabetes or other things where they've lost sensation. And what she says what's really cool about it is how thoroughly the brain can start to make new associations with all different, just different stimulus. And that's not even what you would think. Like you'd think there's no reason for it to work that way, but it does. It's quite amazing. It's a very promising field. The brain is like remarkably more versatile than we ever thought. Okay. I'm just going to do a couple little trees here. Let's put this there like that. Come on. Okay. Promise we're going to be done soon. Okay. 
So for I, I find, like I think I've already said several times, I tend to over detail everything. Um, so what I'm in a quest for right now is trying to figure out a way to not do that so badly. I don't know if we're failing at it miserably at the moment, but sort of the goal here is to not be so precious over everything. Yeah, do you want it? Uh, Spinnerita, I can send you the brush. I don't know if I can send settings, but I can send you the PNG files. I certainly don't mind sharing them with you. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no like rebel brush expert by any means. But it does work pretty good, hey? Pretty happy with it. The thing I'm trying to figure out next is how to do the sort of moving pine tree branches. Let's put like a little a little tree off to the side of this one. It takes time to get the hang of it though, for sure. Cool. Spunrita, do I have your email? I don't know if I have your email or not. I'll um maybe put this in the shared folder. We have a I know we had a shared folder going on at one point. Okay. That way other people can can uh can use it too. Here, I'll pull the uh the settings up so you can see them better. It's pretty basic. And then I have a green too, but let me just find this. Um, bonk. Okay, those, I think they were under, I'm just gonna check if I had them here. I'll find them for you, I'll put them up. It'll take me a little bit to dig around for them, but I know they're around there somewhere. Okay, so we have these pine trees, which are cool. I think they're looking pretty neat. Um, this one's a little ugly and derpy, but oh no, I probably just made this tree worse. Or maybe I've made it better. Who knows? Oh, that's kind of cool. A weird little thing. Okay, and it's dark in a few patches. Okay, so those are some pine trees. There's shockingly a lot of pine trees. Um, let's just let this simulation run for a minute. Yeah, I'll stick it in that Google Drive um, that you guys have had access to in the past. Um, just give me a second. I'll see if... Uh, why isn't this working? Bear with me for one second. We'll let this simulation run out and finish while I go dig for this thing. I know I had like a shared folder for people. Here. Oh, sorry for squeaking in the mic. It's horrible. Da, 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 da. Tutorial support material. I'll just put it in there, I guess. New folder. Okay, so I just made a new Rebel Brushes folder. So I'm just gonna see, if you guys just bear with me for one sec, I'll see if I can find the actual brushes, brush tips. They should be, oh, here we are. Yeah, okay, so I have, um, are those them? No. Um, PNG, okay, just bear with me for one second. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to find them. I know. I'm sure about this, guys. This is really boring. Okay, uh, sorry. I'm going to, I'll, I'll get that sorted. But what I will do is I'll give you this link. I'll give a link to just get a shareable link to the copy link. I'll, and I'll think I can put it in here. I'm not sure how this will work. All right. This should work. Hopefully, and hopefully I don't get a bunch of people spamming my folder, but. Yeah, good idea. I'll I'll put a link in there so that you guys can grab it. So I'm sorry I'm so sloppy on all that stuff. Just a lazy person. Um. Okay. Oh, wait, that doesn't have anything in it. So what was the next thing we had? So we had some pine trees. We had that. We had that. We had that. I think I want to just do some. These are these early ones are not good. It's really messy. Um, I might want to do one more of those. Sorry, I know this is so annoying. Let me just do one more of those like medium sized trees because just give me a second. I just need something a little bit that's not so messy looking. And it goes a little bit deeper. So what I need to do really quick is I need to build my lines. This is going to be a bit of a race because we have to build the lump, the hill hill lump uh, where the trees are. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll just go in here just like this. Let's reduce the size so I can put the pressure up. Okay. There. Oh, this one needs to be taller now because we messed it up. Okay, like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay, taller. Okay, and you're going to go like this. I'm trying to look at the, br the the tree pictures I have posted beside me, but I'm not doing a super good job of it. I keep forgetting to look at them, my reference, but I'm glad it's there. Okay, there we go. All right, so now let's grab really quickly. We'll grab this brush here. Uh, I got to hurry, I got to hurry. We're going to run out of time. Uh, we'll do the mop brush for now, I think, maybe. I want to fill this in. Uh, maybe I should... Uh, let's just do this first really quick. Not sure how this will work. I kind of want um, this to be a bigger mass, but this might just look horrible. Uh, let's grab water really quick and let's wet the whole thing so that it doesn't just, sometimes when you use the mop brush, it just makes for a whole bunch of like weird empty spots. Like you see those little white speckles. Um, while accurate to some degree, it doesn't always look the most interesting. So let's also grab some water. I'm gonna put some water around here, here and here, just splash a few. Trying to, before it all turns to muck here, and then we're going to get our pine brush back. Size this down, and then just try to get in there to get some more interesting shapes, because I feel like we don't have the most interesting. It's a bit repetitive or something. <laughs> I am a lazy workaholic. So, so lazy. I'm lazy about some things for sure. Some things I just like let them slide like mad. Okay. So let's see how that pulls up. I don't mind the look of that. It's not so bad. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Some little trees here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I like this a little better only because it's a bit softer. Um, Let's grab here and I'm going to maybe grab this like mop brush and really drop the loading down like crazy and just like put some stuff around here somewhere. I don't like this really high level of contrast. See, hopefully that works okay. Cool. That's a bit better, I think. And then we'll get our pine tree back, pine brush again, put the loading up. A couple little, a couple little points here. I want to just. This this is a bit uninteresting. Okay, there. Okay, all right, almost there, almost there. Okay, so we're getting closer, I think, to a bunch of stuff we can use. I I haven't done any color or anything because I'm largely horrible with color. But um, the other reason is I want maximum flexibility. So maybe I'm just saying that because I'm making an excuse for not doing more color work. And we could let this dry and just add some light and darks in here. Oops, that's a that's a dark that might not go away. Oh, it's going away. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, I think we have enough layers. I think we have five layers now that we can probably try to bring into the painting. Um, Shavam. Uh, a bit more things. Oh, thanks for the lovely comment, Shavam Bora. Um, I'm glad it's helpful. I, I think like when you go to school. The main thing of going to school is to build relationships. So it's good that you went and that um, that you have your diploma for it. But it, and then I mean I think now too also because you have it, you can probably understand some of the concepts that we're playing with a lot better than if you hadn't. So it's it's I'm glad it's great. I'm glad they're helpful and I'm really happy that you guys are on the stream and hanging out and it's cool. It's really fun. So it's this is fun for me too. Uh oh, why did I do that? I did the wrong brush. That, that's that's bleeding out. Okay, I wanted more of this mop thing. The mop in Rebel is kind of like a a dead brush a bit. It's like a bit ruined. But you get all these speckly things. So that's not always desirable. The round brush is a little bit better for that. But I find sometimes the ink's a bit heavy. But anyways, that ink the round brush might be good for like. Okay, this is gonna be terrible. Let's just want to do one more last last little batch here. This one's dry. <sighs> It's okay. It's dry. We'll do, as soon as I turn this off, I think it force dries the layer. Um, we'll add one more layer. And on this one, I'm going to just drop the water down a little bit. And we're going to try this. Let's see. 
It's like a liney brush. And we're just going to do a really quick... Uh-oh, what's going on? Okay, we're going to do just like this really fast and create kind of a hill. A hill. See if this um, reads okay as pine trees in the distance. I, I doubt it. It's not, it's not looking very promising, honestly. Um, probably need a lighter loading and a little more water. It's really not... It's really solid, hey? Yeah. Let's try this. Uh, no, it's not working for me. I hate it. I kind of hate it. Hate it. Uh, let's wet the layer. No, let's do this. We'll go. Sorry, guys. I'm jumping all over the place. Let's go like this. Just gonna add some like patches of this, like that, and then we'll go. Then we'll get our brush back, and then we'll try it again. Try not to be too precious. Just quick strokes. So we'll see what happens. We can't. There's no intuitively see anything yet but we'll see as soon as I stop painting strokes the simulations will begin there's not a lot we can do after that though I mean we can do some stuff where we blow on it there's some blowing stuff you can do which adds drips kind of cool I guess but it's not quite what I wanted to do so let's just undo that maybe I can undo my blowing all right so let's just let that sit for a bit just gonna fix a couple spots well I don't even know if I'm fixing them we're just I'm not sure I'm not even sure if this 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 thing will work like that we got I think we have lots to work with though um, and the only one thing I wanted to do before we jump into the next section is I just want to add, I just want to paint some leafy things that we can use for, um, for the trees, like for the branches and stuff around here, just to see how it feels if they're a bit painter, more painterly. Um, it looks okay. It looks weird. Maybe, it, maybe we can use it. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so far, three has been pretty stable. I've been pretty happy with it. I haven't had a lot of crashes. Mm. And it is faster. And the ink, the, um, the ink simulations, like the water simulations, are a bit faster. So, yeah, so far, I'm, I've been happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to make my brush super big. And we're just going to make some little patches here and there. So, first, we'll start with some, like, Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. I got to do something first. We have to make wet spots. Um, so let's do like, because it doesn't always look good. If we have a nice spatter brush. We want to kind of have it like bleed out a little bit. In fact, I may not have enough water on this at all. Oh, this one's a bit too spattery. There's no water on the layer because we cleared it. So I might just wet the whole layer. Let's just try that. And then we'll just use like this, this battery brush to like create some leafy patches or something. I don't know. We'll just create a whole bunch of little different shaped patches and we'll see how it goes. Cause I, I might just like pull them in. We'll see. This one's a little more aggressive. There we go. This is how I used to make everything before I started doing so much Photoshop work. I used to just, paint tons of stuff and then just start putting it in things. Okay, and then we'll, we'll do like some really sparse ones. Let the water do its thing. I'm not sure how this will look. This might look horrible. We have no idea. So I'm going to reduce the water on this thing since we already have like a lot of water on the brush already or on the paper. Probably help it not bleed so much. I'm not sure. These don't look so good, actually. I'm kind of bleeding too much. But I might be able to use them as textures underneath. Let's grab some leafies. Oops, that doesn't look very good. No, let's, go, let's go like this. We'll just do some like leafy stuff for a second over here. I'm going to increase the water up because I think it's probably drying now. Mm, that doesn't look very good. Let's try this thing. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. There's some neat little details there. I suppose. That doesn't look good either. Man, nothing looks good. 
Ew, that looks terrible. Look what happened to that. That looks horrible. Well, we'll keep all these anyways. Hmm. That's going to bleed out everywhere. We better f stop this soon because it's going to just explode onto everything. So we'll freeze, freeze. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, let's see here. That was a bad idea. So let's put our water up and just do a couple of these little patches like this. Okay. I need to make a few more leaf brushes. I think that are a little bit more leafy. Cause these feel, these are really re re repetitious. I think I need some with like more spatters, spatters of leaf like formations, but this one's not too bad, but it's still a little bit like, don't feel like my brush is working properly. Okay. I'm gonna put this in there. Can't do much with that thing anyway. Take the water up even more. Okay, so we're about to have like lots of stuff to work with. Is any of it good? I have no idea. Probably a percentage of it is good and probably a lot of it's not that good. I don't mind the look of those. Those are cool. That's neat. Maybe I'll make some more bushes like that. Let's just do some of this stuff. Could probably turn that into a Photoshop brush actually. Cool. Let's just do one more. Try to, try to turn it around all the way. Okay, there we go. Look at the little tiny ones too. It's supposed to be following my brush tip, but I don't feel like the paint is actually following my brush tip. Okay, cool. So we have a whole bunch of stuff now that we can just muck around with. It's cool. So let's um, save this as a PST file. Whoops. Um, where's my holder? There we go. Okay, we'll save it as a PSD. R-A-H-H concept work. Okay, so we'll call this like pines, bush, brush. There you go. Okay, wait a minute. That saved too fast. I didn't save it as a PST. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I've now what I've done is I've created a whole bunch of elements. Those could be turned into brushes, which might be cool. Um, but the main thing I want to do is let's start bringing those into Photoshop and see if we can start replacing. Oh, I forgot to paint like ground stuff, like more bushels. But maybe we can use some of that as bushels and we'll mix them with the nature brushes that we have, the ED Films Nature Pack to give them some cool silhouette or alpha channels. So I hate those trees right there. But let's, um, we'll open this. Where did it go? It's under projects, uh, concept art. And it's called, what was it called? This one. Okay, open. Okay, so we have lots of stuff to work with here. Boop, some pine trees, some of those, which look kind of terrible. Those are okay. Those are pretty good. Those are interesting. I want to see how those look. Those are kind of horrible because they're so busy, but they may be all right in the long run. So let's try these ones first. So I'm going to just one, two, three, four. Because they're already pretty dark. And I'm only doing this just to get the alpha channel out, out, out of it. Duplicate that. Oh, whoops. Need to make a new folder. Put this on there. Just grab some of this paper. Just duplicate that out there and put it inside this folder. So now we've got like a, a like a paper thing like that and then we can put our ink inside Oop. great so let's grab that and put it over I'll bring it up here okay and then we'll go we don't really need this one open anymore but we will save it because I didn't wreck anything and then we'll pull this one down and see what we get here bonk it looks kind of cool All right, let's put it here. Okay, so for this one, um, we want this above that stuff. It looks right. Like, it doesn't look 
bad to me. It looks like it should, um, as far as pine trees go. Uh, let's do this really quick. I, like I said, I, I really hate those ones with the deepest passion. Well, not with passion. I just don't like them because they're hideous. This is okay. I probably, mm, let me just see what we have to work with here. I might flip this over. Because I think I like this part better because it's kind of terminating. And then we'll just erase some of it off, I guess. So we'll shrink it a bit because we shrunk most of them a little bit already. I don't know which side I like better. I kind of like, I like this side better for now. We'll just flip it. That's what we'll do. We'll go like this. We'll lock it down and we'll just give it a little quick flip. Okay, and edit, transform, flip horizontal. That's better. There. Cool. Kind of feels like mountains, but that's okay for now. Oh, and they go down to the valley. That's nice. So we've got these cool trees that go into the valley. Sweet. That looks pretty pretty rad. Okay, cool. Now we just have to ouch. We just have to color them. Ugh. Sorry, I'm like I'm attached all over the place. I need a wireless headset or something. Okay, so let's just now turn that bluish color. Um, sorry, I'm banging everything. Okay, bup, 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 bup. where are we? We can leave it like that maybe. No, because those ones don't look pine tree-ish enough. So well, now we'll go like this. We'll go, we'll sample this color here so that it's similar. And then we'll go control U. And we'll colorize it. We'll lighten it up because it's black. And we'll just get it so it's roughly the right area. That feels good. Cool. That looks neat. That looks pretty neat. I'm getting happier with it. It's like some really nice, very hand-painted looking detail. And we did that pretty fast. That was one of them. I, and that's also why I do so many is because I usually know I'm going to have to experiment to find the right, get the right vibe. I'm going to darken this down just a little bit. Like I'm making the paper more blue and darker so that we don't get those weird light edges. And then I'll just um, brighten up the, brighten up this one a little. I, I'm doing this destructively. I should not be doing it so destructively, but it's an experiment. This is to move fast and to get a sense of the workflow. Um, that's kind of the point here. So, oh, thanks, Manrita. I'm like kind of into the colors too. It's like a weird, it's like you wouldn't think. Um, I think that's the thing about Alberta. And I don't know if you get that out in Auslan, but like, man, when it gets like dry and it's winter, everything is like miserably ugly in some ways. But if you can, if you acclimatize yourself to the, to the grayness of everything, there's a lot of beautiful colors in, in there. Like if you even look here, this was like, I, I pulled a lot of this from that photograph, but there's these really neat like greens and stuff that start to show up, even though they're quite muted. And then these nice like reds and stuff. Anyways, there's a lot to be said for, for the desolate dry winter. Okay. So what do we have here? I'm not sure what brush I've got here. I've got this weird plant brush. Um, we're going to go to down here because I just have this like general texture brush that I use all over the place. And we might use... Uh, we might use this to, I'm putting a minimal flow. I might use this to like, just to lighten things up a little bit as I get further down there, just to, just to get a feel for things. Or I could use one of our cloud brushes, although that will be something I do later. Okay, let's not get too much into that because I think I could get a little carried away with this right now. Because I'm, I'm getting a bit excited because I, I, like, I like the way it's looking. Let's just pull in some of the colors, the grays from here. And drop it in there a little bit and we'll put it down under that. I don't know. We got to put it on top. Okay. Just to like soften out some of this transition here, which we'll eventually fix that anyways, but that's cool. Um, sorry for snorkeling. Uh, let's do one more. Um, I'm going up here. So we're going here and we'll grab the next one, which I think should be a medium ground tree. This one's probably good because I want to replace, I want something in this area. Possibly. I like the emptiness, openness of it, but I also did like what was going on there before. Let's just double check what we have. 
Okay, let's use this one for sure. Okay, we'll duplicate this a bunch of times. We'll merge it together. We'll control click it, make a new folder, do that. Grab like a, a paper texture for the underneath. Duplicate it out, stick it under. And then we'll bring the ink in on top. Cool. Then we'll pull it into this composition. All right, bonk. There it is, should be in there. Or maybe it's not. Yeah, it is. It's just inside of this thing. Okay, so, and we'll scale it down a bit since, like I said, we've been scaling everything down just a touch. Okay. Be nice to get some orange in these trees a little bit. Um, also, for this one, let's darken our paper right off the bat. There we go. Let's go so the paper has a nice darkness to it, and we'll go colorize. Oh, wrong color. Let's grab a uh, brush, 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 alt. Grab kind of like a purpley gray color like that, maybe a little bluer. There we go. And then we'll do the colorize on it. Desaturate it. Darken it a little more. Let's, make, let's get our paper in the right realm. Use a little more red in it. Okay, so it's about right there. Okay, cool. Now let's get, we have these guys, which are really dark. But again, we can colorize them and bring them up. It's a little bit green. There we go. Okay, let's we'll do that for now. I'm sure there's problems with it, but we're going to put it behind this first stand of trees. So it's a little bit lighter. But we need it to be a bit darker than... I may... I may let's just see... Maybe we'll bring down just a little bit. I mean, I shouldn't be doing it this way. I, there's better ways to do this, non-destructive ways. But again, um, I don't like this repetitive three thing that's happening on the trees here. It looks like one, two, three. That happens a lot in the forest, but um, in art, it's not nice. It doesn't look good. So I would probably try to erase this somehow without completely ruining the image. I gotta be careful, because uh, maybe it's this tree that's bad. Just have a look. Yeah, it's probably, the, it's just the, the fact that there's too many that are all kind of the same. So I'm just gonna like lightly erase this one off like that, and then I'll use my little smudger, because I just erased it off the alpha channel, and I'm gonna use this smudger just to like mish that together. That's fine, fine for now. Cool, okay. Cool, that's looking pretty rad. Now this patch is a little bit light by comparison, but we're gonna sort that out. That's just like a foreground patch, see? So that'll get sorted out. Um, and the other thing I might wanna look at doing is possibly adding some worms in there. We'll see. Um, it needs some like, I'm not even sure what it would be, like kind of like warmer colors of some kind, but you really gotta be super careful with them. I don't want to get too, what is halfway? It'd be c think about when you go warm, mm, warm in the greens, they would tend to get a little bit gray. Like they're just going to gray out. So we can, I guess we can just sample like what we just did, but I want it a bit redder than that. Sometimes pine trees have this beautiful red in them. Or even if it's just kind of a bo bottom and around them, it can be really nice just to bring a little bit of that in there. I want to be really, really careful with it, though. One of the things my mom always, I, I think I mentioned it last stream, too, is my mom always talked to me about is, like, you bring repeating color notes all over the place, right? Uh, hey, Ray, welcome to the stream. Um, so if you have, like, greens or browns and stuff, like, bouncing all over the place, you want to have, like, little hints of it everywhere. You don't want to just break everything up. And like, if, you know. Anyways, I, I still struggle with trying to figure out what's the right thing to do. I just don't know. It's nice to have the pine trees really cool like this, but I might like warm them up just a touch as they get closer and let them cool off as they go further away. I don't know. And then we have these pine trees here. I might just put a little bit down there. Cool. Oh no. 
No, oh, Pramod, you don't have to worry about this. I still haven't got back to the thing. I'm supposed to, I have to finish that character up this week, so timing's good. I still, I'm, I'm meant to finish the empty rigs this week. Because they've been sitting on the back burner for a long time. Okay, so. I'm not going to get too much into colors at the moment. That, that green on the pine tree, this is going to take me time, but that green is probably a little too strong. Not on that one, on this one. It's a bit too strong. I'll get carried away. Okay. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty cool. I'm getting better, happier with what this looks like compared to what it was. And that's really neat. I really like those trees down there going into the valley like that. That's super dope. Um, you could probably use some more on this side. On the far side over here. Which is, it's a bit crowded. Like, I don't know compositionally if this is very good because there's so much going on on this left side. But I'm trying to plan it for animation as though the camera's moving. So we can just shut these off for now so we can see everything. So let's take a look, uh, another look at some of the other stuff we have. Uh, hey, Carl, you don't have to worry. No, no big deal. No big deal at all. It's late. You were, nothing was scheduled. Um, okay. This is unofficial. All of this stuff's unofficial. Uh, let's go. Okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? do? I just want to take a look really quick at these trees. Cause there was something, I just wanted to take a look at the idea of just quickly with the smudge layer, the smudger tool. Um, just having a look in what spot felt a little harsh. And uh, I think actually it's okay. I just want to look at something really quick though. Yeah. Okay. So we can soften some stuff out if we want. I might like kill off one little part of that edge just so that it helps break that up. Um, okay, so next thing, let's do, I haven't saved in a long time. Let's do some pine trees over here. Could probably take something we already have. I hate those ones, so they're gone forever. Never come back. Um, let's grab these mid-ground ones, these ones. We'll just grab them again. I'll just duplicate them out. Go like this. We don't really see that side of them, so let's just put them here for now. Put some of them there. It's just a repeat, but it doesn't really matter for now. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to take this ground piece that's sitting in front. Well, this one doesn't have it. Okay, so there's a ground piece back here. Yeah, we need to copy. I'm just trying to keep roughly my colors and compositions. So here we want to delete that. Actually, yeah, we'll want to delete that, and then we will copy this section and put it in front. Control-J, and we'll put it up here. It's going to look bad for now, but it's okay. Why is that not in front? Why? What did I do wrong? What? That's not doing anything. I can't see a thing. What is this layer even? Oh, it's inside of a layer. I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. How big is paint? Yeah, it's 6,000 by 3,000. It's quite big. Um, thanks for the, thanks for filling them in, Carl. That's great. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so those don't look great right now. They're kind of awful. The colors are wrong. This one, we don't want those extra worms thrown in there, I don't think. So let's get rid of those. And we'll probably want to do something a little different with that section. I probably should have like a backed up version that I can look at, but I don't, I don't really care. We're just filling this out. Okay, so we need a couple more pine trees. We'll put in some closer ones somewhere. And I was also thinking down here, we need some stuff. Could even cut into this giant shape with a pine tree, but let's see. Let's see. We don't know. We don't know. Let's go in here. What's our next one that we have? I know we did a bunch of individual pine trees. And then we did splots. Those, which aren't working at all. And those. 
So we have these like little sets. Of, I like those little trees there. Those are kind of cool, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's just grab those for now. I'm going to do a control shift J and that will isolate that layer. Two, three, four. Merge that together. Control click it. Create a new folder. Add the alpha channel. Go here, grab the paper texture. Put it under. There's probably a faster way to do this, but I'm just kind of doing it this dumb person way. Okay, and we'll drag that into the scene. Okay, I put it, accidentally put it, I think, inside the folder. Yep, no big deal. Okay, so I think I liked this one better. And then let's go edit. Transform, flip horizontal. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, Spinnerito. Oh, thanks for thanks for hanging out, Spinneritos. Nice to see you too. Um, good luck with everything, and please do not hesitate to reach out if you need anything. So thank you, and I hope your son's okay. Hang in there. Okay, so. For here, let's just go. I think I'm for these trees. We might go for more of a green color. They're close. I don't know. They're probably the wrong design for the close trees, actually. Let's just, we'll put them, actually, okay. Just bear with me. I'm trying to figure something out here. We'll put these trees more in the foreground. Okay. Um, in front of those trees. We'll make them roughly the same color. Kind of put them in that realm. Um, let's just turn this off for a sec. Control U. Colorize, darken it a lot, there. Okay, and then we'll put these on top. There, we'll just do that. And then maybe this one will just lighten it up just a bit. Oops. I'm again, I shouldn't be doing this so destructively. I'm I'm being quite destructive with the colors actually. Uh, mostly because I'm not really worried about them for this round of things, okay? Just so you guys know. Um Cool. I appreciate that's awesome, Pramod. And you just put it up in the folder. I'll take a look at it in just a little bit here. Mm, I gotta leave at three. I gotta leave before three because I have I have another Another meeting. Okay, so those are just some closer trees, I suppose. Let's just put them there for now. Look cool. And we could just duplicate this group again and just like flip it over. So now we also have these ones. I don't like those trees as much, but it's okay because they're kind of hidden over here. Mm, I might have to darken the paper a little bit because they're, they have this like light edge on them, which I don't like. So what I might end up doing is like I would turn well, turn this more into like an overlay maybe. No, that doesn't work. Anyways, the paper's a bit giving me this like weird edge. I could also just go in and delete it. We'll clean that up somehow. I don't really want to fuss too much about it. It's merging okay. Okay, so next step, let's go and should probably clean up this. Um, what do we got now? Um, let's take, we have, we need to do another kind of far away stuff. So we could probably just grab those pine trees again that we have. Eventually I'm going to have to put in some landform structures. And I think what we'll use for those is we'll use some of our nature brushes from this one, from the plants, from the nature kit, mega sampler. Mm. We'll see. Okay. So we need a couple of like closer trees. I might put some pine trees down here somewhere and break up this solid shape because it's sort of, it might be good, but it might be bad. I just want to experiment a little bit. So let's go back to the one here. Let's grab one or some of our individual pine trees. Those ones. Two, three, four, five. Merge those down. Control click. Boop, bump. New folder. This paper inside there that up there okay cool let's bring it over we good okay uh oh there's nothing in there 
There we go. Okay, these three trees. We'll probably have to like monk them around a little bit. Oh no, I still got to inside something else again. Okay, so these trees should be in front of here. And we're going to want to really darken that paper up. So, control U, colorize. This, we want the trees a bit warmer. We'll see, we'll darken it up. Want the lightest part of the trees darker than the darkest part of the foreground trees. I'm just not really sure what color to make the paper. Let's go U, we'll do it again. I find it a bit too purple. I want to go greener. I'll probably just end up painting inside of this somehow. Mm. Okay. So I have this, but I might put it as like a soft light and just fade it off a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll have to experiment. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what color to be those things. Uh, so I'm thinking that these pine trees could be here, but they have to be significantly darker, or this stuff back here has to be lighter. So if we want pine trees in the foreground here, they have to be pretty intense trees, pretty black, to really pop forward. Uh, again, the alternative is that we lighten up these a little bit, which you might have to do anyway. So we could bring this up a little. It says a color fill on it. Let's go 80, 80, not zero. And then let's do this one. This one, is this it? Nope, that's not it. Nope, nope. There, that one. We can just lighten it up a little bit. Now we could either just lighten the paper. We could do a solid color, just lighten it up like that. Probably better to do it that way for now since we're, we're dealing with color because then you can at least, like you can tint stuff this way, right? Okay, so you're saying something in Patilovic. Okay, you and Patilovic are talking. Ah, nice, okay. Um, okay, so that now I brightened those a bit, which is cool. Um, I'm not so worried about the paper texture, honestly, underneath. It's more about the colors right now. So let's, let's we're gonna make a new workflow here for, for a bit. Um, that's cool. Okay, so these ones now, they don't have to be as dark, th even though they're still quite dark. Uh, let's just put a solid color under this, because then we can really mess with it. And you can make them a little more green or something. Like they should get warmer as they get closer and that'll help separate them off everything. Um, if we take a look at our reference image just over here, they're pretty green, but this is of course different different lighting setup. But also, what I'm thinking is this: these trees would be in the light a little bit. So, but let's just have a look. I've got these trees here. They could go here. Like, I'm going to split them up into individual trees as soon as we're happy with the overall look of them and the color. I think they might need to be lightened up just a touch, just for now. And a little redder. There. Okay, so I'm going to just take these and I'm going to duplicate them and merge them down just so they're a bit easier to work with. And we'll apply the layer mask. And then this way I'll just separate them out. Control shift J. Control shift J, whoops, and there. So now we have th three trees. So we can sort of space them together more the way we want. And I'm thinking with these guys, it would kind of like, they'd be like these weird little trees just poking up down here. Um, I'm not sure if we have two or three of them or what. We'll see. They're definitely too light, but then what I'll do is I'll just enable this on all of them because I might just paint on top of them for now just to like we'll cool them off near the bottom a little bit. Actually, let's do this. We'll just, uh, I'm trying to think because it's so much work to have them all separated like this. Uh, you think you're too much worried about the background. Like how do you mean too worried about it? For the, the, for the actual project itself? 
I mean, it is possible. I do tend to overdo things. Okay, so let's just do this here. Just keep telling, just keep talking to me. Tell me what, tell me what you think I'm overthinking. Okay, so the only thing I want to do here is I just want to get a touch of the green in like a kind of a, a light color because the sun is hitting this tree. There you go. Yeah. Hello. Stop. I'll just stop in here just a few minutes. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Um, just doing this tree thing. Sorry. Uh, sorry for the interruption. I have to leave. I have to leave in like two minutes. So I'm just doing these trees because I want to get. We're gonna get a feeling of the sun hitting these pine trees, which they look kind of cool, even though I'm using Photoshop stuff on top of them. They look pretty cool. So let's bring this up and have like a really... Mean when you when uh, you mean when shoot the character, the background gets blurred, and I would rather just work on the foreground. Uh, I see what you're saying. Work on the foreground instead. Yeah, I I totally hear you. I think actually you're right about that because the character will get a lot of this stuff will get blurred off. I think the reason I'm kind of experimenting so much, um, kind of my idea anyways, is to get a feel for how to treat everything. Because you're right, a lot of this will get disappeared and won't actually be even in the shots. We won't even see it. So um, that's completely true. And I think at this, what I'm trying to do at this stage is just get a sense of, of w how I'm going to handle things more than like what it's actually, actually going to look like. like. It's kind of like, how am I going to deal with far background trees? Um, how, how am I going to like deal with uh, like is this a good technique I think it's more than anything because in reality a lot of these like foreground elements would be blurry like because if you saw these trees here these trees are out of focus but the original trees are really quite in focus and so there's a big difference and yeah there's a lot of can be a lot of wasted work also it depends if the camera is moving too right so this shot here for instance it's coming up and moving over so our focus initially won't be just the character. It would be stuff around it. But that being said, yeah, it's, I think it's a relevant critique to say, because I ask myself that stuff all the time too. Is like, am I overworking this? Is this pointless? What am I doing? Um, it's important to constantly ask yourself these things and know because I think a lot of it can, yeah, it can totally be a waste of time. I'd say at this stage, for me, this is the time to experiment because after this, I have to commit and I have to know what kind of assets are we making. And yeah, like I tend to overwork things and then I have to like pull myself back somehow. And uh, yeah, totally valid, totally valid, uh, a valid question and uh, critique. And I think if I was doing this more for a specific production shot, I'd probably be a little more careful and I would actually assemble it more in After Effects or in whatever game engine I'm using. Because that way I would know, I would see like how blurry things are and how in focus and, and anyways. But yeah, good good point, Good, definitely worthy of mentioning. And I appreciate that. Uh, the last thing I just want to point out really quick, just for on a technical level, um, if you notice that the trees, I'd pushed them initially to be really dark because they weren't standing out against the background. See like that? Um, well, that's true on a superficial level. Uh, as soon as we get lighting and stuff, we realize even though the pine trees are quite dark with direct light on them, they're quite they they, they can bounce quite um they can uh, pop quite a bit. So, with that in mind, because of that, my darks are a bit darker than my foreground or sorry back up here, but my lights are significantly lighter. So that's breaking them off the background nicely. Too. So I got to go, guys, but thanks for hanging out. Um, I appreciate it, and I will talk to you later. I'll do another stream again very soon and keep working through this painting. Um, hopefully it's not getting too boring for you, and there's some insight to be had. But I'll see you guys later. Thank you.